Howdy folks, Jimmy Lee here back with another video. Today we are reviewing the NECA Toys Mad Predator from the Alien vs Predator 1994 inspired arcade series. If you haven't watched my previous reviews of this wave, I reviewed the Hunter and the Warrior Predators, which I will show in this video. Links can be found down in the description below. Since we are on the subject of reviews, thank you all for your comments on the Bad Blood vs. Enforcer 2-pack. We got a lot of people commenting, talking about the figures, what they like, what they didn't like, what NECA should do, and especially about the... Whew, the quality control issues that Bad Blood had. Man oh man, that they were rough. But luckily, I know I'm going off on a tangent. I tend to do that in my videos. I do apologize. You may skip through the video if you'd like. But I want to mention that this guy really doesn't have too many quality control issues. It's probably just mine. I got super, super lucky. If yours does have issues, which I'm sure it does, comment them down below because I'm curious what other people have to say about their copies of this figure. Anyway, before we get into the review, I just want to note that I did find this guy at a Target in a different city. It was, I think, Thursday. I was heading home from school in a different city, and I happened to be passing a Target, and I thought, what the hell, I'm hunting for this guy, let's go ahead and check. And he was the last one there. I think they had two other hunter predators. That was about it. But uh, yeah, th this was the one I've been hunting for. I don't know why it took me so long to find him, but luckily he is here. And yeah, that's about it. I, I don't have anything else I want to say. So let's get into the review. Alrighty, so the box really isn't too special. If you've seen my other reviews, you pretty much know what to expect. You do have the Alien vs. Predator logo down there, some beautiful toy photography of the figure, which says Mad Predator below it, in a very, actually, kind of arcadey font, I just noticed. I, I tend to spend too much time on the boxes, but hey, I think NECA puts a lot of love into them, a lot of toy photography, so I go over it does come with a cool background if you want to display your figures with that. I'll show that in the next video when I do an overall impressions of the wave. Do have another beautiful shot of the Mad Predator right there. And the poster, if you will, of the 94 video game. And a lovely icon of the figure, which again, I think it's nice that they do that. They don't have to. They clearly have people working on this figure that played the game that grew up with Predators, so I want to show it off. And especially here at the back, it's super cool. Let me go ahead and zoom in on that. There he is battling a face hugger. Really, really nice looking. There's a biography of the game. You can pause and read that now if you'd like. And like a health bar and stuff. And of course, other figures in the wave. Whenever these guys come out, I will be reviewing them, but currently I have these three up here. So expect an overall impressions of that wave pretty soon this week so yeah I will be keeping this box I know I spend too much time on them but I think they're cool so yeah I'm keeping them well, let's take a look at the figure now okay and here he is looking really really pretty I'm gonna give you guys a quick 360 here I will tell you straight off the bat that this is Definitely my favorite figure in the wave. Hunter and Warrior were pretty good. I really enjoyed their color schemes. But if I'm recalling correctly, I don't really have like a bright blue predator like this one. I mean, he really, really stands out on the shelf. I, I kind of said the same thing about Hunter, but at least with Hunter, I had a few predators that, you know, were pretty close in coloration to him. I mean, He's kind of like a mix of gray and a little bit of white uh, and yellow, obviously, orange. But I have a bunch of predators like that now that I looked. But this guy is just completely different. Really, really makes the shelf colorful. So I think he's badass. And he does come with a couple accessories, which I'll get into in a minute. But yeah, he, he's a beautiful figure. Like, straight off the bat, before the end of the video, I highly recommend him. He's just so cool looking. Anywho, he does come with two accessories, a face hugger right here and a alien chest burster, as well as his plasma caster or shoulder, can shoulder cannon, excuse me, and the bone necklace, which I'll show here in a minute. 
Okay, so let's start with these little buggers right here. Let's start with the alien chest burster. There he is. Uh, pretty much the same mold that we've gotten with other alien chest bursters in the past. Only, obviously, this is kind of a different color. Um, but, yeah, I just noticed he has some paint scuffs right there. That's kind of annoying. Uh, he obviously is kind of like a... His tail is like a dark shade of green. And then you kind of get... I don't even know what color. Beige, in a way. I don't know how it's appearing on camera. But uh, he does have, you know, the uh, metal wire in the tail. So you can pose him accordingly. You know, wrap it around the uh, his arm or his leg or whatever you want to do. Um, but I think it's cool. And he actually has, like, sculpted teeth in there. I was surprised how detailed that was. I never really take a super close look at these. But I think they're pretty cool looking. So, yeah. And we do get the... Facehugger, which is pretty awesome. We have gotten this mold, same with this one in the past, nothing too special, but obviously he is painted differently with a, you know, a little bit of brown, yellow, and beige in there. And it's kind of splattered about, and again, the bendy tail, which is lovely. Always loved him bendy tails. And he got a little pink on his, well, I think we all know what that looks like, but you know, I don't want to get age restricted, so anatomy, kids. He actually does have some paint bleeding here under the tail, but you never really see that, so I don't mind, but I do point it out because I don't want to be like big reviewers and say, oh, y'all, this is amazing, it has zero problems, go spend all your money on it. No, it has problems, but I can at least look past them. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the figure here. He obviously has an open mandibles head, which I think works beautifully. I do like how they use some black paint in there and a little bit of yellow for the tusks and the teeth here. I think that looks pretty cool. And different shades of blue all around the head. Uh, you, you can tell it's obviously darker in like the crevices, but man, it's great looking. And the eyes are super duper creepy. Just got you know, essentially just black eyes with dots of white, which just make him look very arcadey, and I think it's pretty damn cool looking. And man, just the detail they put in this is really, really incredible. All the skin and the wrinkles and the folding, especially here on the outside of the mandibles, it's just a lot of attention to detail. And I always like to just take a super close look at these figures because. I don't know. I, I think NECA is really underappreciated at times for the, you know, truly the amount of detail they put. Yes, you do pay a lot for these figures. I mean, I paid nearly 30 bucks for this, but you really do get the real deal. You really do. And here are the dreads, and they're pretty good looking. Uh, in person, the dreads are kind of like, they're, they're black with a little bit of brown shading here and there, and the clips are brown, but they're pretty nice looking individualized which is always nice so definitely good looking here I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove the plasma caster to show you guys I, I don't really consider this an accessory because and this is something I said in my previous reviews they all should come with these type of things they should not be considered accessories it's a part of the figure uh, but this thing is painted really nicely. It's the same mold as the Jungle Hunter Plasma Caster, which is fine. You know, it does its job. The wire has yet to rip on me, which is lovely. And, oh, would you look at that? It actually has tight joints. If you are, if you are pretty fluent with NECA Predators, have been collecting them since, really, their release in 2010, uh you would know that these don't like to have tight joints. They really don't. So, yeah. But, look, there's plenty of detail here. I do like the shading they use with different, uh, you know, types of green and a little bit of, I don't even know what you can call that, like a beige, maybe. Very camo. Uh, I think, you know, it works great. It is kind of tough getting it on the Predator, I have learned. It's super duper tight and you really have to work at it. There obviously is a port there and a peg here. Obviously a port there as well. And you really just got to work with it. It takes some fiddling. Okay, there we go. And even, you know, after spending like a good minute trying to put it on, it's not even on all the way. Uh, 
Not sure why. I guess it just wasn't molded correctly, but uh, you can hardly tell, especially from a distance, and it's not going to fall off. It's on there pretty tight, but just, you know, be aware that some of them won't be able to go in all the way. So, yeah, I just want to make that mention. Uh, the mold is Jungle Hunter, just straightforward Ultimate Edition Jungle Hunter, which I really, really love. Um, something I mentioned in the Hunter and Warrior Predator reviews, I really dig the shading going on in between different muscle groups, especially here in the abs. It clearly defines the muscle groups and how much mass this Predator can take on. If you do watch Always Sunny, you get my references. But yeah, I really do like it. The netting is sculpted on. It is not painted, which I always do appreciate. Got the leather straps right here, which are a nice brown and the bone necklace which is pretty much a reuse of the jungle hunter do like all the paint work here on the armor pieces got a brown with beige shading make it look arcadey can't even call that shading i mean that is paint but yeah and as you can tell the wires are still attached which always is nice and you do have his wrist right here which is very very pretty a lot of detail in there and like most predators these days it can open stick your fingernail in there and there you go not much paint going on in there I will admit but I can look past it and it's just really nice looking here are the hands got them brass knuckles if you will and you know just looks really nice painted fingernails white definitely works. Uh, not all of them are painted completely. I'll get to that more when I you know, show off the feet. But uh, yeah, here's the other side with the white wrist blades. Uh, just be careful. They tend to break on me if you mishandle them. But they work here. Lovely. Let me just find a way. Again, I really don't want to break this. There we go. And here's the back. You got his little skirt here which is sculpted beautifully got a little pocket right here or more, more like a like a satchel but yeah that's nice looking um, you know one thing I like about this mold is you know obviously the belt and the skirt if you will are attached really really tightly to this guy and you can actually see that you know how tight it is I mean the stomach and the muscles actually kind of pop out because it's pushing into his abdomen uh, I think that's just really, really cool and something I haven't mentioned before. But yeah, uh, here's the rest. Again, very arcadey. Again, that blue shading. Uh, I do have some paint mishaps here. There, there, and you know, obviously there. But it's not too big of a deal. I kind of expect it. And here are the knee pads and shin guards, which look nice. Here are the back. They're all scratched up and scuffed. Which is nice again with that paint but yeah and the feet and you got him shandles here which look nice and the peg holes but yeah I was trying to look is there an, I thought there was a nail that wasn't even painted I guess hmm I guess I'm thinking of a different predator but this guy's filled with detail I mean he is really 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 nice looking and they clearly worked hard on developing him yeah he does have some paint issues but honestly I can look past it he doesn't have any issues with the joints nothing's falling apart on me and really that's all I care about I, I can deal with you know certain you know I guess you can call it bleeding out of the paint I can deal with it but I still wanted to I guess make note of it because some people do care about that and I care about it but yeah, again if you've watched my other reviews you, you know why I'm going easy on this guy okay let's get into some articulation I am gonna go ahead and remove this shoulder cannon piece just because I want to show the full mobility of the head but the head can go forward that much or up rather and it can go down that much can move side to side since it is on a peg ball peg and it can basically have full mobility so that's always nice uh, this arm here it's a tiny bit tight you want to be careful but it can go out that much 
get it back in, and it can do the full 360, though I don't really recommend it. Got the upper bicep cut here, and a double jointed elbow, Marvel Legends females, take note please. You do have a forearm cut, which is always lovely. These, like I showed, can uh, you know, push out and retract. The hand can fully rotate. I don't like to do it when it's the hand with the blades next to it, but it can go out and in as well. Uh, this side is very limited because of the shoulder piece, uh, but it can technically go out, though I don't recommend it. And just to prove it, because I know people can care about this, it has a full mobility. All right, now we do have the abs here, and like the newer Predators have, he does have two joints. One is up here, actually do them both at the same time. Uh, you want to be careful, don't want to break it, but yeah. And can go forward that much, can go side to side, and basically do everything you need it to do. The legs here are on ball joints, so he can move forward that much, though the skirt does prevent a little movement. And back that much, and for some reason he can do the splits. So, if you need him to do a split, there you go. He does have an upper thigh cut, a double jointed knee, which is awesome, and the feet can fully rotate as well as go out and in, and has ankle pivot. So, he has a lot. And he needs it. Just trying to get him in a better pose here. And if I didn't show it off earlier, you know, this can go forward and back, and there's a ball joint on the actual plasma caster. So, he is filled with articulation. Again, for people new to the line, be careful with this side of the figure because the wires tend to rip off. And here is the mad predator with his brothers, if you will. We got Hunter here. Obviously mad and warrior. You could tell that this wave was pretty strong. I mean, QC aside, they are really, really nice looking, and I really hope they make even more predators from the game. And his little necklace is crooked, but expect an overall impressions of this wave. I just wanted to, I guess, give a sneak peek. And if you are curious, here he is next to a standard, you know, six inch female. And if you want me to get really, really nerdy with it, let me remove Amanda Ripley here, as well as Hunter, who doesn't want to stand for shit. Had to cut right there, because he did not want to stand. And he is about a little less than eight and a half inches, so yeah, there you go if anyone was super curious about it, which is probably no one, but I show it off anyway. Alrighty, we have reached the end of the video, people. Do I recommend this? Yeah, I do. I pretty much say that in every video. I just want people to know that your copy more than likely will have problems. I simply got lucky. I had a couple, you know, paint blotches here and there. It really wasn't too bad, but the joints were fine, and that's really, I'm just really happy about that because, again, check out my reviews. It was a nightmare. As a figure, he's great. You pretty much know what to expect if you are already a Predator collector. He is basically essentially a carbon copy of Jungle Hunter, only completely different paint job. Regardless, I'm really happy to have him in my collection. I think he's a lot of fun. He stands out, and he comes with some, you know, pretty good accessories. And again, he really stands out on the shelf. He's super cool to look at. And when he's with his arcade friends, it just makes a really, really cool display. Just wait for that, you know, uh, overall impressions video. And man, when those aliens come out with Dutch and Lynn, it's... <laughs> And with the backgrounds I'm going to use, it's going to be such a cool shelf. So definitely pick this up if you do find him. He's a great figure and just a lot of fun. And as always, people, go check out the Sanctuary group on Facebook. Got some badass collectors out there. All their links to their YouTube channels will be in the description provided. Definitely go check out my reviews of the rest of this wave. And stay tuned for more Alien Isolation and overall impressions video. And a little Hot Toys little discussion video that I've been planning the last few days. And with that said, people, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you comment, 
I don't ask people to subscribe anymore. I think commenting is way more important, as I've noted before. So let me know what you think of this figure. Are you going to be picking it up? Are you going to be passing on it? Does yours have QC issues? Does it not? Let me know all that, and I reply to everyone because I just love interacting in this community. It's just a ton of fun. Okay, people, you guys have a good morning, evening, midday, whatever, and take care.